Okay, folks, let's get started, please. Uh, we can get you uh, back in. Um, let me uh, let me start this afternoon session with uh, just a thought. And um, I say this because it's been something that's been uh, very much on my mind lately as I look at the world and the way the world is and the uh, challenges that we have in the world today. Um, and I see that uh, for the most part we we continue doing the same things we've always done in the ways we've always done them, right? Uh, and it should be no surprise we get the same results. Uh, so I've made a, a part of my vocabulary the, the term disruptive innovation. Disruption, disruptors. So we've got to look for disruptors. And I, and I think this is a group that understands that uh, better than most. Uh, if we're going to make significant change in the world, whether it's around uh, climate change uh, or issues of war and peace, uh, we're going to we're going to have to find new, different ways. We're going to have to disrupt the ways that we've always done it and, and, and find uh, new innovations, new approaches, new processes uh, in order to take us to the level we need to be. So you may not expect to hear that from a mayor uh, talking about disrupting things. I mean, we're supposed to keep things, you know, going on a steady pace, right? No, we got to disrupt them. we got to change the way we do things in the world. And so um, I'm going to, uh, one of my disruptive innovations when I took office was to uh, uh, bring on staff a sustainability director. Uh, we were talking about sustainability, but it was sort of a shared responsibility of everybody, and therefore the responsibility of nobody. Um, and so we said we have to find somebody that's, uh, that will take this as their primary job. Uh, Haris uh, Alabashic uh, is our Director of Sustainability and Energy in Grand Rapids. Uh, he manages our energy programs so, along with all of our sustainability initiatives, including our sustainability plan. Um, Harris is a uh, native of, of Bosnia, uh, immigrated to the United States, got his education at Grand Valley State University, uh, recently completed his PhD work uh, with uh, Walden University, and uh, we are fortunate to have him. I'm going to turn the microphone over to uh, Harris for this next presentation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Thank you so much for being here in Grand Rapids. Uh, I moved to Grand Rapids back in 2000. Actually, I was in Grand Rapids in 97 and 98 through the United States Information Agency Scholarship. Went to Grand Valley State University, went back to Bosnia, and then came back here with my whole family. And my mom, dad, and my two brothers were just visiting with me yesterday. So I was telling them that there is a whole group of folks from uh, different countries here in Grand Rapids, and uh, they were just talking how great this area is in terms of welcoming different people of different backgrounds and uh, regardless of religion, nationalities, ethnicity. So well, I think it's a uh, great opportunity to be able to share with you some of my um, my favorite work for the city is really uh, centered around sustainability and our next phase is sustainability planning which really focuses on climate change and how we plan to address climate change in our sustainability planning through resiliency work. We have a team of uh, city folks and the uh, King County, as well as EGRI, which is downtown development agencies rep, working on the phase two resiliency grant application, which is a federal uh, application for resiliency work uh, that's due uh, to a Michigan Economic Development Corporation on Wednesday. So that's been consuming most of my time. Uh, we're gonna be asking for a lot of infrastructure and other types of uh, work and um, talking to uh, different folks, it becomes evident that the uh, climate change is really uh, a very important, if not the most important uh, issue that our communities are going to be facing. So with that in mind, I want to give you just a preview where we were, what the importance of uh, planning in the city's uh, work is, and, and what documents we use to plan our sustainability work, as well as our climate change uh, response work. So 
with that in mind, um, I want to give you a little bit of, of a preview in, in terms of uh, what I'm going to focus on, some of the definitions, sustainability uh, plans, and uh, triple bottom line, our energy goals and projects, uh, effective partnerships, and, and then uh, talk, brag a little bit about all the good work and awards we got. I think Mayor loves that one the best. Um, <laughs> So uh, I think it's uh, fitting to start with the definition of the United Nations and the definition that deals with the issue of sustainability. Um, it really looks at sustainability in the future tense, uh, looking at the ability to continue uh, providing develop development needs and meeting those development needs for future generations without impeding current generations' economic development needs. So it's really a triple bottom line focus um, I, in my PhD work, I looked at that and I, I thought there is a really fitting way to look at, uh, at sustainability, a set of effective and efficient actions taken by any organization or individuals, institutions, communities, uh, however you want to define that, to ensure the economic stability, growth, financial success, and uh, to ensure that the, there's the least negative uh, environmental impact with the most positive societal income. I, I believe that it's a really good way of looking at it. It's a systemic, holistic approach to sustainability. Um, so with our sustainability work being well underway for over 10 years, we're looking at climate change and what the climate is going to bring, climate change is going to bring to this community. So the uh, focus is on resilience. Resiliency looks at both mitigation and adaptation. Uh, oftentimes, resiliency is confused with adaptation alone. Uh, I can tell you that resiliency planning takes into consideration both mitigating and adopting factors into planning uh, in order to better prepare communities, to have better response to disasters, to have better ways to bounce back from uh, difficult and disastrous situations, and to continue providing economic growth and sustainability to that community. So some of the work that we have in the city of Grand Rapids, we have a stability plan, and stability plan has been in place since 2005. It's really under Mayor Hartwell's leadership that we started the whole process of adopting stability plan. The first uh, type of stability plan that we had back in 2005 was somewhat rudimentary in, in its in a sense that it didn't have specific targets or indicators that would guide decision making or process in order to accomplish certain goals and objectives. But the, the new version that we adopted, the City of Grand Rapids Commission adopted back in 2009, is really looking at specific targets to deliver those outcomes. It's a multi-year adoptable document and we're planning to have the next phase of our sustainability plan hopefully adopted yet this year for the next five years. Um, the other thing I want to focus briefly at the, at the end of this presentation is on our climate resiliency report that we did in partnership with our friends and partners from the West Michigan Environmental Action Council. I think it's an important document as it guides our climate change discussion, uh, discussions around climate change as well as it helps us uh, deliver specific recommendations into our sustainability plan related to climate risks, climate change risks. So, if you have a chance, um, you probably had a, a little bit of uh, maybe preview before, but we have a sustainablegr.org and our website has an up-to-date sustainability plan as well as the uh, sustainability plan progress report. So, every year we issue an updated sustainability plan progress report, keeping in mind that we have over 200 targets and those uh, targets have specific outcome champions associated with those targets. So if there are staff from 1,500 employees that we have in the city of Grand Rapids that are assigned to specific targets, I am assigned all the energy targets from energy efficiency, natural gas consumption to uh, renewable energy targets that we have. So I'm not only responsible for those targets, but I am responsible for delivering outcomes related to those targets in a way that's financially responsible and something that provides a great accountability to our uh, residents and our businesses in the community. 
So this is the uh, fourth year report that we had. Um, as you can see, we have 98.3% of our sustainability targets have been met, completed, or, in, or are in progress. We only had a four out of a total of 231 targets that have not made progress. It doesn't mean that they didn't make any progress, but they didn't make progress enough to qualify them as moving forward. So when you look at that, that's a pretty significant amount of targets being met in terms of four-year progress because sustainability really is not a timeline that you can look at five years, ten years. It's a long-term process in itself. But I, I think what it does in terms of when you look at sustainability, when our organization is focused strictly on delivering these specific outcomes in sustainability plan, it really gives us a chance to, to, to drive those targets and to give us, gives us responsibility to be really focused on triple bottom line. As a matter of fact, our new focus is no longer on triple bottom line. Uh, for the past six months, we adopted the quadruple bottom line approach to our sustainability planning. So the next phase of our sustainability plan will have an added element of governance under our what used to be a triple bottom line, now it's going to be a quadruple bottom line approach to sustainability um, planning. So the specific to, uh, to I mentioned the energy in, in our sustainability plan, and specifically in our focus on sustainable energy targets, what we have is, for example, a specific energy efficiency target. I just want to give you a little bit of a perspective on how that works. So we have an annual consumption uh, reduction target for natural gas. We also have an in increased energy efficiency conservation for all city facilities. We also have an energy, uh, renewable energy target of 100% by 2020 for all the city buildings. Uh, it really is a challenge that mayor issued to us back in 2007. We met it ahead of time in terms of the first iteration that we had, which was a 20% target by 2008. We met that target, we moved on to 100% by 2020. Um, I believe that while it's not an easy target, it really challenges us to think creatively and innovatively using innovative instruction to, to quote the mayor, uh, and to look at energy as an opportunity to address our financial goals as well as to reduce our environmental footprint in the community, in the region, in the state, or in the nation. Um, under energy goals and projects, we've done some renewable energy projects. Uh, we have a rooftop solar at one of our water administration building, buildings. Uh, we also have a project that's going to be probably fully operational by no later than next year, September. It's a up to three megawatt large scale solar uh, development, solar farm, solar project, however you want to call it at Butterworth uh, Superfund, Superfund site, <coughs> excuse me, that is a uh, landfill site that's been uh, capped and we have to work closely with our environmental protection agency representatives in order to make sure that we, we don't um, penetrate the cap in a way that's environmentally irresponsible. So that's one of the projects. We have uh, geothermal fire stations uh, we're looking at uh, additional work with Consumers Energy uh, to, to basically promote the green energy purchase and to do some of the work with electric vehicle charging stations. We installed initially nine uh, electric vehicle charging stations around the city, especially downtown. And at first, you know, when <laughs> first few months, I was kind of concerned because we really didn't have anyone using those. But uh, now, last time I checked, we had over 3,700 hundred times they were used, and there's only nine of them in downtown area. Um, so we have, our, our practical goals in terms of stability planning is really to keep track and report and make sure that we, that we have a way to show progress in our sustainability plan. And even if there is no progress, and if there are uh, those goals that we have set up for targets that we haven't met, we have to report them. It really goes hand in hand with our governance or the fourth tool of sustainability we're planning to add that, that aspect of transparency that you really can't put in their, either other social, environmental, or economic goals or targets or 
um, it goes hand in hand with our community engagement because we have a very positive feedback most of the time uh, from our community uh, in terms of our sustainability. Unless you read the, today's article about our solar project, then they may be not so positive. Some articles, some comments. Articles are really good, but comments itself. Um, green power. We are currently at 27 percent um, in terms of our energy that comes from green sources. And again, those targets are going to be moving. We're going to be meeting those targets as we reduce our energy consumption. It becomes a lot easier for us to meet our renewable energy targets as well. So the more we reduce in energy consumption, the more we save. The more we save in energy, the more we can invest back into our, uh, renewable energy projects. It's kind of a nice way of looking at energy as a, as a uh, very positive way to address cost, if nothing else. Um, this is an example of our electricity usage, as you can see uh, from the benchmark here of uh, fiscal year 2009 to the last fiscal year 20, 2014 that we have data for. Uh, we were able to reduce our energy consumption by almost, I would say, around 8%, 9%. And we will actually, if you look at back to 2006, our energy consumption, electricity, is has been reduced by 14%. So that, that's a, a strategic goal to address some of these, um, I would say, cost associated uh, issues that most organizations face as they pay higher cost in electricity price every year. We, we have seen an increase of four to five to six percent most recently in electric cost uh, for all cities operations. Um, one way is to really meet our sustainability plans targets is really to work co collaboratively and to, to probably institutionalize that idea of sustainability in the community. And once we started this process back in 2004, and this, that was before I joined the executive office and started working, uh, I started working with the executive office in 2005, but it really started with Mayor Hartwell, Norman, a couple other folks, and five organizations initially created this community stability partnership that now expanded into over 270, 270 members, all around the idea of sharing best practices in sustainability. And what it does is really um, embeds this idea of sustainability in the community. We have you know, great partnerships here in the community with universities, as a matter of fact, my office has a, a partnership we've had, we had it for six years now. We're working with uh, Norman's office. We basically create opportunities for interns to do research, to work with me, work with my with, with, with the executive office, with me and, and the rest of the team to, uh, to really learn about the basics of sustainability and it takes them to the next level as they look for uh, professional career in their future. And we, we had a very successful partnership, again, as I mentioned, for six years. Right now, I have five interns working in my, in my office. It really helps me uh, deliver outcomes uh, for, for the city in terms of stability, energy, and the legislative work that I also manage for the city, both state and federal. Um, so the next phase, you know, how, how do we engage community at large, how to engage businesses, not only to the community stability partnership, but we have a new way of looking at uh, reducing energy consumption in commercial buildings uh, using something called 2030 district. And basically in partnership with the Institute for Energy Innovation with West Michigan uh, uh, Green Building Council and the West Michigan Stable Business Forum, we started this process of engaging commercial building owners in downtown and wider downtown area, outside downtown as well, to basically commit to reducing greenhouse gas emissions in their operations, to reducing water consumption in their operations, and to reduce, of course, electricity, natural gas, and all the other aspects that produce greenhouse gas emissions, but also to look at transportation and innovative transportation efforts. The 2030 district, there are, this is the, the proposed map of our, our boundaries that there are decided by the district participants. But as you can see, it's a pretty significant um, 
area that would be included in the 2030 district, uh, mostly commercial building owners who would be committing uh, to, to reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, electricity and water consumption. But it also includes uh, uh, academic institutions. I know the Kendall College of Arts and Design is included right there. Um, and, and others in, in this district that will be helping us overall to reduce the goal. GVSU is another partner and um, many other institutions. So not just commercial, but commercial buildings itself, not commercial um, as in, in the sense of private sector alone. Um, there are right now 10 districts around the US and one in, in, in Canada, uh, in Toronto. We became an emerging district just a few months back. So we expect to be fully operationalized district and recognized as, as, a, as a 2030 district. By the end of this year, we have three different groups of teams, stakeholder groups, uh, working on uh, developing framework to meeting those specific targets of 2030 districts around. It, it really is a, I should really go back and, and describe that this started by Architecture 2030. It's a group uh, that basically engages commercial building owners uh, to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And um, I think it's a big recognition for the city of Grand Rapids, for Grand Rapids area, for, for our community to be part of that group of cities such as Dallas, Denver, San Francisco, and others on this list that, that are recognized as 2030 district. The other way to, um, again, engaging commercial, commercial private sector um, is very important in meeting our stability plans and targets. But I, I also find it, that it's important in addition to engaging academic institutions and uh, universities that we have and schools, we have a great partnership with Grand Rapids Public School as well. But engaging our nonprofit sector, uh, groups like West Michigan Environmental Action Council, um, helped us develop a climate resiliency report. It's the first of its kind in the US. The uh, Grand Rapids Climate Resiliency Report will help us guide our climate change discussions and build into our sustainability plan. Next phase, next phase of our sustainability plan will include some of these recommendations. There are really scientifically based recommendations to climate uh, related risks to our community, to our region, and really drives a lot of discussion that we have right now in the community. As a matter of fact, it really helps me with our hot resiliency grant to use this. Um, just a side note, this would not be possible without a grant that we received through um, Walmart, uh, $25,000 uh, that Mayor Hartwell received the US Cl uh, Climate Protection Award uh, for the work to, uh, to promote and to help with climate protection through the US Conference of Mayors back in 2012. And with that, um, I would recommend, rather than going through all the aspects of our climate resiliency report, if you have a chance, go to our website, sustainablegr.org. Um, but I would like to end with the, uh, some of the recognitions that this city, this community, our organizations received throughout the uh, US and throughout the world in terms of our um, disruptive, innovative, work in sustainability. So with that, I'll leave it open to any questions and I'll give you uh, contact information at the end of these slides. Thank you so much. Thank you, Harris. Uh, <laughs> so um, you can see that Harris is a disruptor. A disruptor. And that's, uh, I think every, every city, every university needs a disruptor. Uh, uh, and so, uh, Let's open, let me open the floor for about five minutes of questions uh, or comments on anything that uh, Dr. Obash has just said. Uh, congratulations to, uh, to all of you here. That it's, it's really interesting to, to see the, the amount of, of uh, progress that's been made. I'm wondering if you would like to comment a bit on specifically the role of uh, public understanding of, of education of the general public, training programs for your uh, not only the civic employees but uh, partnering with the private sector training that must be going on around sustainability and, and that sort of thing. I, I think that's a great question and it's a very important issue. Um, 
from my perspective, from, from our work, and, and Mayor and Norman and others can probably add to this, but with our community, I think the key to success is really this ability to engage everyone across different sectors, private, public sector, uh, different sectors, employees. I'll give you a few examples um, in terms of just better understanding how stability is ingrained in this area. Um, the uh, West Michigan Stable Business Forum I mentioned, they, they've been working in last year or so on resiliency work and the resiliency framework around climate change and businesses and the, the impact that climate change will have on businesses in West Michigan. The work of uh, Granada Area Chamber of Commerce and they're, they were promoting their own web, web tool, web-based tool to uh, track greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, the work of all the academic institutions and providing different types of uh, sustainability-related initiatives. I know uh, Northern is teaching sustainability courses at Granada State University. Aquinas has a program in business, sustainable business development. Calvin College has courses in sustainability. Kendall College, uh, Granada Community College, uh, Granada State University has a, uh, a graduate uh, certificate in sustainability. I'm plugging IT shows courses, so that's all. Um, it's a very good certificate program. Um, but the, um, the, the idea of community engagement is really critical to um, enabling and embedding sustainability and delivering outcomes. It's also, uh, it goes the other way too. We have to make sure that we communicate well what sustainability is and what it isn't. Uh, so that our ability to really translate the outcomes from economic perspective is really key. So when we talk about solar panel project, it's not just solar panel for the sake of putting solar on abandoned or super fun site, landfill site. Um, it's about what it means to the organization, how then it will translate into uh, sewer and water rates in the end, or how it will help reduce overall cost. It's the key. Thank you for your question. Uh, Chuck, I wanted to add something to it. Um, I think most of the, quote, intern work, people understand from a degree basis, but almost all of the work that really gets done is based on skill sets. So in the case of the education and training, that comes out of the city, they'll put the requirements for skill sets that, the, that are expected and say, yes, major public policy is important, but what I really want are skill sets. Give you an example of a new one. Their expectation now for his office is all students need GIS mapping. Oh, I wasn't here last year, but that's due to the internal transformation of the city. So a degree may not have that in it unless you burrow down and ask the question is what's the applied skill set that adds the value to that office. So this is the interaction of where training programs are headed. It's more of these specific applied skill sets that are being driven by cities and businesses, not necessarily just what you need. And the only other thing I'd add is uh, is, is persistence. Uh, Persistent in that message, uh, you know. It, 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 in our case, it's taken it's taken years to break down some of that opposition. There will always be some that will be opposed, or there will always be deniers. You, but you, and, and quite honestly, you simply can't waste your time. I think you can't waste your time on those folks. Uh, but but be, be persistent and consistent in your message. Uh, about uh, everything you're doing in sustainability uh, and can be very, very public and transparent about it. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned the fourth bottom, your quadruple bottom line. Could you just say a little bit more? So governance, right? What does what will that look like? Yeah, this is uh, another issue that we've, we've been struggling you know, for a couple of years with reporting requirements at our sustainability plan and our transformation work that we've done through transformation investment plan. We have another area that we're really focused on uh, disruptive, innovative investments into operations in order to bring and deliver uh, the best outcomes. So the idea was to look at 
and, and expand the definition of, of triple bottom line to ethnic governance in order to cover our uh, financial resiliency. How do we ensure that we have good bond rating? How do we ensure that we, uh, in terms of our financial work, we're doing the right things that we need to be doing to, to really continue being uh, resilient financially in time of crisis? How do we then ensure that there is continuous community engagement and that we continue our transparency, accountability. And I can go on and on for, for these types of elements that don't necessarily fall under either social, environmental, or economic areas. And I think that's the key to understanding where we're going with governance. There, there are no other cities that adopted the, the important layer. There are no other cities that have targets in their state. I'm a big fan of targets versus indicators. All right, I think we have to stop so we can move on. Harris, uh, thank you very much for being with us.